Now, here comes the music. All right. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock Central Time. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable. And we have a special guest star tonight, all the way from beautiful Connecticut. We have DJ Rachel here tonight. Everyone, give me a big round of applause for coming in tonight. Please. Thank you so much. Uh, awesome to have another great DJ here. And um be great to get some information. Um, first thing first, uh, DJ Rachel, you want to talk a little bit about your business, uh, about... Uh, how unique it is out there in Connecticut to uh, DJ uh, gigs. Hi, nice. yeah. So once again, I'm DJ Rachel. For anyone who doesn't know me, I've been uh, doing this thing for, geez, probably like we're almost at 20 years now, but I'll say as like a business, like 10 is when I kind of really started to take uh, things seriously. I actually have a pretty unique story how I got started. Uh, it's, it's a little long, so I won't tell it today, but I have like a ton of other content that kind of goes into how I got into it, but I actually never really wanted to be a DJ. It came out of a, a family emergency where I just kind of had to step up in the moment and figure it out. And here we are, you know, 20 years later, running a, a business that I never thought I would even have. <laughs> so it's uh, just funny how the world just puts things and situations in front of you and just kind of lead you in a certain path. So with that, uh, I, my professional career kind of started out in the club bar scene. Um, it kind of goes along with the how I got started story, but my brother was a DJ and you know, he would go out, you know, for a cigarette break and he'd be like, all right, you see this song and you see this song, see how this says 104 and this says 104, you know, just kind of hit that and do this and I'll be back in, you know, three minutes when the song ends. So I would do like one little mini mix and he would come back and then the cigarette break turned into like, I'll be back in 10 minutes, then a half an hour, then an hour and week after week, I kept getting like these little micro mini lessons so he could go like hang out and relax. And I ended up DJing when I, again, didn't even like think of it. And, uh, and then he started passing me kind of gigs here and there. And uh, so I always had a, a really strong mixing background, but I, as I kind of developed my skills and matured a little bit, I started kind of venturing into the private event space. It started out with a, a local gym was kind of like my first like not club bar gig where a gym hired me to DJ their fitness classes, which was a ton of fun. And then from there, you know, you have young women, you know, a lot, a lot in this class and they're getting married and they have, you know, little girls that are getting, you know, their 15th birthday and just things really just started to kind of take off. And it's just been a really interesting journey. So I've done everything from car shows to uh, fan experience at uh, you know MetLife Stadium for another DJ company. I've opened up for Gloria Gaynor and George Clinton Parliament Funkadelic uh, weddings, school dances. Like I don't know if you need music, I'm there. You know, I'm I'm just kind of one of those like open format, flexible people, and I just love it. So yeah. And uh, just so you guys are watching out there, if you're watching on uh, later on YouTube or if you're watching right now live on Twitch because we do this on Twitch on Tuesday nights. Make sure you go to her YouTube channel and she has other social media. She has Instagram, you have Facebook, you have, are you on TikTok? I am on TikTok. Not as active as I should be, but I'm on that's, TikTok. Well, that's fine, <laughs> but you're, you're on TikTok. Look for her. It's worth watching her gig logs. It is absolutely awesome. Uh, I will tell you this, you have a great personality. It's a nice bubbly personality that it comes through naturally. It's like someone you could sit down with and, you know, have dinner with and just chit chat and have this great, awesome person to sit across from you and talk, just talk, talk about stuff. It, she breaks things down. She explains things, how she's doing it. And it's always awesome. It's educational, especially if you get into the business, you're just getting into the DJ business. It's one of the people you can watch uh, along with Matt. Matt does a great job doing that too. And a lot of DJs here on YouTube have a lot of great looks for that and help you out. And that's what the show, this show is about is to help everyone out veterans as well as people who just starting out. And the one thing is that with everyone here, it's great information here. And if you have a question, you have a critique, you have a comment, put it down below. I love seeing those comments on YouTube. I love seeing the comments in um, Twitch. 
which I have to move my <laughs> my little Twitch screen over uh, from one screen to another screen. That's what happens when you have multiple screens going on. Um, but yeah, it's one of the things that you out there watching right now or watching in the future, you have a question for the panel, put it down. You know, we want to hear it. And again, it's great having a, a great DJ in here and a person has a lot of very, very cool information. Um, and again, get different perspectives of things and different looks. Uh, so one of the things that uh, we had a question and I forwarded <laughs> to everyone. Uh, and this is from uh, DJ. Uh, I'm going to try and say his name right because he actually he phonetically did it. Aji. Um, he said, uh, here's something I would be interested in finding out. If you see the dance floor is slow to fill, what is the banger song that you go with to get the crowd going to dance floor? I know that it works in San Antonio and Austin area, but what works here may not work in your all's area. I'm sorry, I'm not from Texas. I can't say that word right. So I'm sorry, Brilliant. I'm sorry, sir. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. If you need a, if you need some help, I got you, buddy. There you yeah. go. Yeah. I'm no, sorry. No. trying to say y'all. I'm not trying to make it. I'm not trying, trying to mess Texas. I don't mess with no. Texas. No. <laughs> uh, we should have uh, that go-to song or even genres. So if you had a slow filling uh, dance floor. I, again, he is in the Austin uh, and San Antonio area in Texas. Um, I, me personally, I always look at what the crowd is, what the crowd is into. Just because you're in Austin or San Antonio, they can be a rock crowd. They can be like into like your hair bands or your, your grunge or whatever you, your stuff is. And this is when it becomes good to be diverse in knowing different popular songs in those genres and maybe throwing that out or throw something else out to just surprise them and see if it works. It Here's, doesn't hurt to throw a song out that you may or may not think <laughs> works and just see what happens. But yeah. I will tell you what's been working last year, which I was very surprised and it has been working, worked very well multiple times and actually a video on YouTube uh, is Fall Out Boy, Sugar Going Down. It, it's it's one of the songs that it's just hitting people left and right. Like to, it, I'll give you two of my, are you talking about opening the dance floor? Oh no! The dance floor is slow to fill. So that's his oh. question: is the dance floor is slow to fill? I what I always fingers you get to attract people to the dance floor. I mean, my my dance floors fill quickly usually, but because uh, people know what they're getting and they know that they're a dancey crowd typically. But the two that I always start with here's two of my secrets that I never tell. Uh, I either start with Higher Love, um, the Kygo remix, uh, Kygo and uh, Whitney Houston. Uh, I think it's Whitney Houston, right? Yeah. Um, and either that or superstition or superstitious i have a remix called the silo remix and it's very like funky kind of like it's it's the per those two songs are perfect to get the older and younger crowd in they're not too over the top energetic but they're enough like to really kind of bring people in and start off your party and then that way i always get they're both at 100 so i always gauge the crowd and i'm like if they're ready to like party right away then we're going to go right up into like 115 into 128s or if they're more into that like funk kind of stuff then we'll keep it like uptown funk we'll do more of the like respect that kind of stuff and and slowly build that way but i mean if the dance floor is dead i just i mean here's your cheap answer but uh, cupid shuffle always works <laughs> you can you can always tell my thing is you can always tell how good a dj is by not how many people come out for the line dance but how many people stay out for the next song after the line dance and i always uh, uh, always gold mine for me right after cupid shuffle is tricky always works it's tricky always works most people know it they stay out there we'll run dmc uh, how how yeah. long do you guys keep people going do you give them a break like sometimes i feel like like to me i'd be like all right i'm more out from dancing it, sometimes let's, let's move into a slow song yeah, or let's go into something and then bring it back up hot you know I, bring the hype down then bring it back up i i do slow song if the if the dance floor is like dying or if it's coming in waves and like people are starting to move off of it then like a slow song always works because then you're going to get the old people back on and it it helps people catch their breath a lot of the venues that i'm at are uh, i mean you think venues have good air conditioning and then you get 150 people all dancing and sweating and and jump in it, it gets hot in there so uh throw a slow song on and that way i can go to the bathroom and get a drink and they can 
relax and everybody can cool off and i don't know that's my i'll say uh dj fire for me a lot of it is the couples that i deal with and the clientele i deal with down in texas a lot of normal music we'll say but also that country mix as well so kind of ride that way a lot of couples want the country texas country also so when you can kind of tell the dance floor is kind of dying people have really been dancing the whole time hit them with like a good country set fade back into the normal pop rock hip-hop stuff like that but kind of just ride that wave the way you feel it there's i don't know if it's just our area but me and mike live within a few miles of each other and um a lot of my it just seems like a lot of our gigs are dying off like seven eight o'clock people are out the door i mean as soon as dinner's over uh, a lot of the old people leave there's a few that hang around i had one wedding i did last year or maybe it was the year before that we were done by like 6 30 well it was dying off by 6 30 and by seven the bride walked up to me and says you can start turning down now we're done i was like what it, the sun's still out you know but I just, I don't know, just around here, a lot of people don't like the party anymore. Weddings just ain't what they used to be. So, yeah. DJ Rachel, what about you in Connecticut, in, out there in Connecticut and the New England area? What do, what do you see? What's your banger out there? So, of course, this is a, like a complex answer for me. There's a lot to unpack here. So, number one, I think there's a difference with this question in terms of whether you're talking about clubs and bars and private events. So, that makes a big difference in, in how you approach this. Um, so I'll kind of just speak to maybe private events and weddings simply because that's kind of more of my focus now, because let's be like real hill, that's where the money's at. You know, I do a uh, club and bar gigs, you know, right now during the winter time is like kind of filler work, but I'm not doing any really club and bar work from like May until November, because that's prime wedding season. So I'm not going to waste it at a bar when I can be doing a, a wedding or something like that. So I do think that makes a difference though. So with private events, I don't think it's always just about the song you play. There's a lot of creative ways to get your dance floor to fill up without going to, I'm going to say gimmicky songs or something like that. So I kind of stage my floor for success. Um, <coughs> you know, for example, like after maybe the, or for the couple's first dance, if they decide to do that after dinner or something, you know, get everybody to surround the dance floor. That way they're already centralized, located on the floor. So it's easier for them to kind of gravitate towards the dancing. So when you drop the banger or your opening track, like it's not like pulling teeth. People are already primed and ready. I've already been, you know, psychologically kind of analyzing them during cocktail hour. I know I've been testing the waters with the pop punk, you know, a little funk, a little new disco, a little classic rock, you know, just to kind of see, all right, you know, who's doing what. So like I'm already in their heads, like well before that, we even get there, you know? Um, and I know if it's gonna be a good crowd, I know if there's open bar, if people are hitting the cocktails, you know, like there's so much psychology that goes into this. It's so much more than just having a great track because there's like energy and momentum that you have to build in it before you even get there. You know what I mean? Um, you know, another one is doing like a, a photograph to open up the floor. Like some couples might want to do the table dash and you get everyone to rush to the floor and that the energy's high. It's been all this excitement. So people are like, they're just primed and ready to go, you know? Um, but if we are just talking music outside of, you know, the things that I just mentioned, um, obviously knowing your crowd makes a difference, but let's just say it's a mixed crowd where you have, you know, young and old from 70 to 10 year olds there. Um, I tend to play it a little safe and I'll find something that's cross generational, meaning it's recognizable to everyone, but it gives someone a little piece of everything. Like for example, um, Motown, really popular. It's got a nice like mid tempo. It's not intimidating, you know, it's approachable music, but I have this really awesome remix of uh, I Want You Back by Jackson 5 but it has a, a biggie juicy mixed into it. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. So it's taking like, you know, the old school hip hop for the 35, 20, you know, 40 year olds, but grandma, grandpa, and mom and dad, they just hear like the Jackson 5 beat. So you can kind of bring a lot of generations in with tasteful mashups. So like that's the approach I would take. Um, also like Latin music is huge up here. You know, so sometimes you just drop like a Latin banger, a little Mark Anthony. Um, I hate to say it, Bad Bunny, you know, like 
people are running to the floor for that. It's it just, it crushes, it's huge. Um, sing-alongs, um, you know, like like Timber. I have a, an acapella intro of, it's going down, I'm yelling. And like people just, they want to sing it. It's, it's recognizable, it's got a great energy to it. Um, God, I could talk about this forever. There's so many like tools in the toolbox. There, there's really not one answer for this. No, but, no, no. And, and, and that's why that's why I said you have to look at your crowd and size your crowd up. Definitely. And you know, looking at what is going on there on a the dance floor, uh, you know, far as having you know, again, bangers. It, again, what crowd do you have there? Uh, DJ uh, Brentley, again, you do both clubs and you do private events. Yeah. Is there some go-to stuff you go to that uh, you feel? I actually have a slight theory about it all coming because in the Midwest, as you know, we generally do grand march, dinner, speeches, all in one lump sum, and then after speeches, get to everything. So my one song being in Wisconsin, I've caught on to is and or it hasn't necessarily caught on to, but we're surrounded in lacrosse by farm towns. Anywhere and the nearest big city is Madison, and that's two out two and a half hours away. Rochester, Minnesota is 90 minutes away. So we're kind of in the middle of it all with the university. And so coming out of dinner, my litmus test, child, <laughs> is playing Uncle Crackers Follow Me. And I didn't get and it wasn't one day I just threw it on and I looked up and everybody's clapping to it. I'm like, oh, I already know where everybody wants to go tonight. And realizing that. Their country, they're into country pop and that sort of thing. Uh, I'll throw Shania, uh, life's about to get good right on after that. And then see where we're at. If we're almost like, hopefully by those two songs, we're ready to go straight into the dance. If we're not, then I'm getting a little salty myself, kind of, okay, what, I don't want to waste a banger, so to speak. But I've got to keep it somewhere in between the two. Now, when it comes to like the dance floor, if it's not going great, like you said, yes, those group dances, which everybody hates and yeah, you can do it. Or one song again, being in Western Wisconsin, Shania Twain's man, I feel like a woman. Yeah. Right out the I, <laughs> I, I will do it right out of the gate. And one, you're the one thing I learned, and this goes back to working in, on division street in the nineties in Chicago, get the women on the dance floor at any cost. Because where, where the women go, the men will follow. Your floor will start popping immediately. So if I can do that and then follow it up with Footloose and Wannabe, yeah, we've got the country pop thing going on, which, yes, it fits the Western Wisconsin motif. Now, as we, if we're later in the night and things are dropping off, and what I actually did for New Year's Eve, which translates well into weddings, is get as I'm good, but I'm only playing 30 seconds of it. I don't want any of that after her first time getting the, the drop, I'm going right into P's, I got a feel. It worked pretty well on New Year's Eve, so I've dropped it at a few weddings since then. And it's kind of been my new go-to 128, 130 era, area, I should say. And coming out of that, I will definitely, if I need to bring them down at all, I'm definitely throwing, because again, Western Wisconsin, Taylor Swift's love story on, right at the end of the P's. Or more often than not, most people, that have hired me have seen me at like what my res regular Thursday gig here, Animal House, and they want me to do exactly what I'm doing there at their wedding. So <laughs> I, will, I will start at a hunt, you know, give that first hour to the entirety of the wedding. And then right about after an hour in where you technically would have the bouquet and garter toss, by old folks, I'm playing. And this became a joke about how many ambulances I had at my weddings from people dropping out. I just don't, the club thing, I just don't back off. You're told not to. You're told to keep the pop, you know, the party going from start until finish. And a few people got into my head about it, but I started going, okay, nine o'clock sharp. Here comes wobble. Here comes yeah. And we're going straight to that set. And for me, now I keep doing that, but you put out the best one out there. Fallout boys, sugar, we're going down swinging. Right when I've been at about 125 to 130 BPM or so, maybe even pushing that up to Casc uh, Cascada every time we touch. And if I'm really feeling lucky, I'll throw a hand clap there. 
But right near the end of that, I'm dropping Sugar, We're Going Down Swinging, simply because it has that fade out ending. And that gives me a that gives me an opportunity to go in any direction I want, be it rock again, pop music, country, but that fade is everything at the end of that song. So, I feel the same way with Mr. Brightside. It has the same kind of ending. You can drop whatever you want after it. I do, I do Brightside and the Mo Bamba a lot, which sounds crazy, but works really well. <laughs> no, it, it's it's because the energy is so high. You could you could like fart oh, yeah. your microphone and people would still while out after Mr. Brightside. So I like absolutely. saving Brightside <laughs> till the near the very end of the night. I honestly do. Because near the last hour, when you can tell people are doing that, we are hammered, we're going up and down, or, you know, they're starting to dwindle. I will start doing this little thing. Dance song, sing along, rock song, and do this little up and down thing just to keep them engaged for that last 45 minutes. At that point, I don't want you leaving the dance floor. If you're going to puke, go for it. It happens a lot at my weddings. And I will push until the very end and then play whatever the couple's last, you know, group song or whatever it is they want. And then on that same note for clubs, it actually came up. Uh, I caught on to it a couple times up the way in Winona. It didn't work as well on the cross at first, but now I'm, it's starting to pick up. If I'm having a rough night, I will play CeeLo FU right up. That or um, Gail ABCDE, Black Bear, uh, Hot Girl Summer, anything Because of what it says in the song, I will have everybody, though, everybody in the bar screaming. It. So it, those are my college bar kind of clubby things. And if you're at an actual dance club, I always lean into temperature from Sean Paul. Yeah, that is my number one. Since I can remember, anytime anybody hears that boom, 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 their heads look up and they go straight to the floor. Yeah, I I have the 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 temperature uh, sample in that Tokyo Drift song. Um, I forget who sings it uh, or who it's by, but if you look up Tokyo Drift, uh, Sean Paul's temperature sample is in there and okay. uh, always a banger. I, I do, similar to FU, I do Gnarls Barkley Crazy into um, Own Boss. The da -na -na, da -na 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 -na. Okay. Da -na -na -na. That one's, yeah. I, my, I was going to say real quick on like regional stuff out here, like we had this movement in the Bay Area a while ago called Hyphy, which didn't really make it anywhere outside of California. So like over here we play, I have a lot of couples that are from the Bay Area that want to hear a lot of E40, Too Short, Keek to Sneak, Mr. Fab, uh, Mac Dre, uh, which everybody's heard of Mac Dre, but uh, it's like, I, I've never heard anybody else play like Fizzle Dance anywhere else or uh, even like, I, I have Wannabe into Tell Me When to Go by E40. And so it I've, started- I, Yeah, I've actually heard of E40 with you and yeah, you I played and a lot. <laughs> when it starts with the intro of that wannabe and then people are like oh, why are we listening to spice girls and i'm i get on the mic i'm like you really think i'm gonna play spice girls right now and then it drops into the uh tell me when to go and it's just <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. fun so my couple this weekend's big bay area people so we're gonna that and like throw back old like 90s california hip-hop with snoop and all that good stuff so that should you, got, be... you gotta have that fun stuff the um we got a couple of things in the chat here uh, first thing first, uh, DJ Adrian E, which is another Chicago DJ. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and then uh, ask for you, DJ Rachel, uh, what do we have to look forward to? Uh, what, videos, the next what videos we what? got to look forward to from you? Anything, oh, cool? anything, so anything you can give exclusive to us here on the round table? Yeah, so literally today, like how ironic this question came up. Um, I just got my uh ever shelf and mic cable so i did a review on the everse but i didn't everything was back ordered i've been waiting for my shelf for like months um and actually hold on i got it like sitting right here i'm back with another 3d printed shelf thing um that i'm now incorporating with my gator pole for my everse so i'm gonna have the shelf i got this new 3d printed shelf um it's blurry but so anyway, I got a new ceremony rig that I'm I'm working on with things. So this is what's that's going to be on the agenda tomorrow. So good question. So stay tuned for that. Cool. And then uh, Adrian, follow up the uh, what's it? 
Engage, uh, Eve herself. Okay, yeah, yeah. Eve herself, that's what she just said. So he's just reiterating. Um, DJ Mike James. Again, I know you and uh, and DJ Fire are in the same area, but uh, I, again, you you do a little different gigs than he does. Sometimes you do similar gigs. What do you see that is a popular song that you might go to? Again, it, it's a big question, like Rachel iterated before, but it's one of the things that, what, what's some of the songs you go to? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it is a lot to unpack. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends a lot on, on where you are. I, I tend to, I'm kind of staying pretty consistent in a, in a bar that I do again in the off season of weddings, just to keep the bills paid. But of course, because the weddings do pay so much better, but uh, you know, all the line dances always do really well. I, you know, you can't ever go wrong with, with two thousands hip hop. You know, you know what I mean? Regardless of what that is or, or what era you're from, if it's Flo Rida, if it's, you know, if it's P's, if it's, you know, E40, if it's any of these guys you guys are talking about, a lot of that stuff uh, really translates well. And here in the central Illinois area, you know, just like uh, Rachel was saying, Bad Bunny, Romeo Santos. I mean, all, all of these, all of these uh, Latin performers are, are doing fantastic here also. And I mean, the, and I do take requests. I know a lot of DJs don't, especially when I'm in the bar, because it's kind of, uh, one, it, it gives me uh, a little bit of a, uh, not only am I already in the minds, because I do the same bar all the time, so I know the people and I know the crowd, you know, and I know that I can fire up ACD so I can do all that stuff and then drop it out and, and, and go ahead and pull hip hop and everything else that I do to keep the night going. But uh, again, that's a that's a huge question. You can't go wrong with line dances, but you know, I mean, it really depends on on how that night is going. You know, I mean, it really did. And for me, I, I you know, I do my mixes, you know, as the night goes. So no two shows are ever the same. No. What well, what about you? Cool thing. Is there some songs you go to as kind of a you know, I don't really go, I don't really go to any specific song. I would go to more like two thousands hip hop line dances. You know, more upbeat stuff to get people on the dance floor. Some genres, okay. Yeah. So again, it, it's it. Hopefully, to answer you right there, um, and, and that question. And yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, Ori County is more diverse. It's got a lot of different types of people, so I DJ for different crowds different races i'll tell you one song that a lot of well is uh backstreet boy music oh they're good singing alongs i want it that away i mean i, want I remember when backstreet that song came boy out. In there, especially the younger generation you know i do yeah, i'm telling you, my... you dancing queen uh dancing queen slays yeah. i'm gonna say probably 30 percent of my weddings i'm opening up with uh dancing with that little piano of that <laughs> And just the, people yeah, go, the intro. they go, yeah, they go, they go wild for it. Um, you might think this is funny. Is I'll play a, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy at yeah. the college club here. I DJ it in town all the time. Oh, and cute. I swear to God, the, the girls are jumping on the bar and going just bonkers for it. And I never dreamed outside of Dancing Queen, like it's that cute. would push that hard. I was floored. You could thank TikTok for that. That's a uh, that's, that's, that's what I was going to say. Thing. That was what I was going to say. Is that, that you were talking about cross generational yeah. songs. This year, TikTok this is year, bloody helping year. that out. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. One at one at a time. Braylon, go ahead. No, I was going to say. I was going to say. We we're talking about TikTok. I mean, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, is that it. uh, it's pretty crazy how TikTok is just helping the cross generational stuff. So, like a good song that I've noticed here recently, especially in the past year or two, is "Let's Groove." Um, earth wind and fire and that's because it's come back to be popular on tiktok so the younger generation knows the song and so you can play it and hit both generations you can hit your your gen z's and then you can also hit your you know your we'll say even baby boomers and things like that people in uh, like your gen xers and things like of that nature so with tiktok's done a lot but it's done a lot of good it's also done a lot of bad we'll say <laughs> there's a lot of unique stuff on tiktok that people need to stay away from but let's let's do this real quickly i'm going to ask you guys a yes or no question because we're getting a little bit of disco here i got a question no. for you for the, for the room so it's a really yes. quick yes or no would you play it at a gig and that I'll question is <laughs> would you play would you play anything from the Bee Gees at a gig oh, yeah. DJ yes. cool thing Definitely, I, uh, gotta play that. Definitely, there's, okay. there's a lot of older. Yeah, there's a lot DJ, of older people out here in South Carolina. DJ Fire, like, yes or no? Oh. EGs. 
Um, hmm. Is this multiple choice? Yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you play Bee Gees? Uh, what, I, 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 I do all time. Nice I do. I, my, my groove. I'm trying to think. I may have played, I think I had a request from them last year or year before. I think I played them once and somebody, the, the dance floor kind of cleared. So I hurried up and rushed into something else. So it's it just depends on the crowd, I guess. So I'm going to play about the crowd, but. DJ Rachel, BG's yes or no? Oh my God, the biggest yes in the whole world. And not only that, I got so many versions. Like I got staying alive in the club to, to kind of hit that cross generational thing. I tr use that as a transition track to go into like Bruno Mars 24 karat magic. Even if you just do like <laughs> a, a, a 20 second clip of it, that, uh, uh, you know, the acapella use the stems. Like, dude, it, it, it's like a staple. Like, if you don't play it, my mind is, like, blown. It's, <laughs> yes, the biggest yes in the whole world. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, I've been listening to Bee Gees, I've been listening to Bee Gees since preschool. I had their cassettes and run of CDs and vinyl and everything. So Matt, I kinda... what about you? Yes or no, uh, Bee Gees? If it's a disco-liking crowd, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it, it goes right there with Higher Love. Like, it's in that same realm of 100 to 110. I think it's, what, 98 or something, but... I, I used I just use a Saturday Night Fever version, um, but it's I mean it's always a, a crowd pleaser. I won't play it later in the night. Like if I'm gonna do disco, it's gonna be earlier. Uh, same thing with September. Like uh, all those are gonna be earlier in the night because um, I like to I like to get into EDM and hip hop as quick as possible. Um, not even EDM, but just like my normal stuff that I like to. Well, e EDM is usually like you know one twenty five up, and then. Uh, you know, hip hop is usually below 90 for the most part. And disco, it's like right there, at like 105, 108, 110. One I'm telling you, I love, I love the 105s. Like I love that middle range area. I really do. I don't know why. Like I personally love it, but don't get me wrong. I know how to look at a dance floor. No, I need to go down to the 90s, 80s. I need to bump up to the 120s, the 130s, but I love that little 105 to 110 range sometimes. So, it can really work. So well. Braylon, is it is it B is it Bee Gees, yes or no? Oh, it, yes for Bee Gees. <laughs> I got two songs, uh Staying Alive. Duh. There's a lot of remixes, but one that works well for me is Staying Alive into there's like a remix I have with like 24 karat magic. It's kind of a good blend from that side to the newer stuff, we'll say. And then also if you can do like a quick mix with like more than a woman pretty oh, yeah. good one don't stay in it for too long because it's just repetitive and you can stay in that but quick mix into it have it for like 30 to 40 seconds get out move on it's great if you if you want a good remix of more than a woman the sg lewis remix is like sg good, lewis yeah sg lewis Ooh. groovy housey kind of i'm gonna write it down yeah sg so lewis. mike <laughs> mike hey, james, what about you bgs yes or no you can get the absolutely full it's a good transition it's definitely a good transition you know what i mean I, I have no problem with the Bee Gees. Loved them. Loved the movies growing up. I mean, who who doesn't like uh, chest hair and gold chains, right? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, <laughs> DJ Brentley. What about you, Bee Gees? Yes or no? I'll go. They're one of my favorite all-time guilty pleasure bands. And like when I did mess, when I got to the show at Midwest DJs Live last year. I actually used three different so uh, versions of Staying Alive for all of maybe 45 seconds until I went to 24 Karat Magic. And then as of late out of that, I've been playing around with a 24 Karat Magic run of about eight different songs coming in and out of that whole thing. But I use Record Box. I don't have stems. You're all lucky. All I got to say about that. Well, again, I know you're, you use Record Box, holding Record Box to add stems in there. And then, I wish. I wish. Get out of here. 130 final answer. That's that's for all the stuff I want. So we got a couple comments here from DJ Adrian E. He said for sure BGs forever. Uh Aaron, the DJ 12, always for great Canada. Hello, Aaron. Uh BGs. He said also hello, everyone. Uh, we should be dancing. Gold is what also another thing he put up here uh, in the chat. So that right there, you know, uh, we should be dancing is a good one. You know, a lot of people, I think a lot of people related to Saturday Night Fever's uh, soundtrack, the Bee Gees. And they have, they have tons of other songs. And they have 
stuff before Saturday Night Fever, and they have stuff later on uh, in the '80s. But I think they're they're solid stuff. It's it's like ABBA. There, there are certain songs like you know Mamma Mia. How many people time how you play Mamma Mia? You have the people who are the uh, kind of the kids and the people who were into uh, like theater in high school and college are out there singing Mamma Mia. It happens quite a bit. And again, that's what's reading your crowd and seeing what's going on there. For the first yeah, we time. Comment. We got a comment on the switch that says tragedy. Tragedy is a good one. Tragedy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I played for the first time. Uh, I've never had a clear dance floor, but Dancing Queen cleared my dance floor a week or so ago, even though it was on their must playlist. Really? Cleared Completely cleared it. It'll happen. It'll happen. That's the anthem up here. Aside from man, I feel like a woman for guys rip their shirts off, rush the dance floor, and pour beer on each other. I, I noticed it. And I mixed <laughs> up it for like one, like a minute or so, but I was like surprised. I've never seen that song clear a dance floor. So Adrian, uh, not Adrian, uh, uh, yeah, Adrian, uh, Aaron the DJ. I'm saying Adrian. I'm sorry. Aaron the DJ said they're sick of it. Peeps. <laughs> so maybe, maybe people are maybe they're burned out on it. I don't know. But again, it's something that you want to always keep an eye on. And again, that's that's as professionals as we all are, is watch the dance floor, play something, see the reaction, and then continue on. Uh, next topic I want to go to, I sent you guys an article that actually came up um, in my feed on uh, Google. And it was an article about a bride in the Philippines. Uh, she said her normal bouquet she got a bouquet of onions because on, the cost of onions, I guess, in the Philippines are outrageous. And she wanted something that she can use, practical use, after the wedding. So when you guys are doing weddings this year, this is, this is the question. Um, do you see stuff like that, brides and grooms getting stuff at their wedding? Doesn't matter if it's a bouquet or a couch or whatever them taking that back from their wedding and using it either in their house or using it somewhere else and being practical with the stuff they're bringing in? Or are you still most of your brides one, you know, one and done, use it once and that's done with. So cool thing. What have you seen? Have you seen people just, is it one and done and stuff or is it use it over again? Well, I haven't DJed a wedding in two years, almost, yeah, in two years since 2021. So I haven't seen anything like that. I've been DJing more traditional weddings a couple of years ago. So they, nothing's really changed here as far as weddings and, you know, that kind of stuff. I've got a good answer. We, we, we here in California and LA, uh, everybody loves their flowers. So I've seen, you know, people that spend upwards of 30, 40 grand on flowers for over the top insane venues with centerpieces and arches and this and that and when I used to DJ on the central coast at the end of the night they would always tell me oh tell people to take the centerpieces home take them tell them to take their flowers home but now that I'm like in Orange County in LA the florists want them back for some reason uh <laughs> I don't oh. I don't their their flowers are going to die anyway but um I people that's what's big here is like these really arch architectural features at weddings is what's big here like instead of just what's at the venue they're doing like rigging points with flowers and making you know archways and other architectural pieces that i've been seeing more at weddings so that's kind of like it's it's more than just your simple table settings with the centerpiece now it's like stuff is being flown from rafters and you know floating boxes of flowers and floating other elements it's it's becoming a thing um that's yeah, what also it's your, your flowers that you put on the front of your your trusting, which is what's important. Oh, yeah. Like those that. are custom made. Are, are those yours or are those like the florist that bring oh, those to you? Those, those are mine. Um, I bought them from somebody and his girlfriend actually handmade all those. Uh, so there's only, oh. those are the only two sets I've seen exist in the world. <laughs> but they're just fake flowers, but it, with, uh, yeah, it's, uh, they're pretty cool. I, I, I don't sell them as much as like you see them at the wedding shows. Like very rarely do we actively sell that package, but um because i've started to do the global trust global trust makes scrims that have zipper pockets now in the scrim so you can actually mount lights while the truss is being scrimmed up because i don't use my trusses totems i use them as actual you know what trussing is supposed to be used for like nathan does where you're actually mounting stuff to it uh and so i'll have like those little zipper pockets open and put the, the lights there but that's that's in the future but i don't know they're uh, they're cool because they hide they <laughs> 
while we're on trust, I want to I want to bring a question up to DJ Rachel. Um, do you like your Rockville collapsible totems? So I did like them, um, but I sold them like a year ago. So I was using the uh, Novo Pro. That was the brand that I had the collapsible totems. Um, simply because I didn't have always access to a vehicle to keep them assembled. So I like the option of being able to break them down. Uh, but after a while, I got tired of breaking them down. So I kind of left them assembled and I just kind of repackaged things so I could save that 10 minutes of assembly. But it was still cool that I, I had that option. Um, I moved over to all Max Design DJ stuff. So now my current totems match my DJ booth. And they do collapse down, but instead of screws, they have latches and they're a lot quicker. Um, and now they're like a lot easier to illuminate. And my favorite part is no damn scrims. I hate scrims. Uh, after the last time I forgot mine and I brought my Novo Pro totems and I had no freaking scrims to put on them. I had to put the totems back in the car and I had to leave my moving heads on the floor. I was like, yo, never again. So mine have like a, a plexi velcro front so i don't have to worry about stains wrinkles <laughs> forgetting them none of that so um they're great for what they are but i've just found something newer that came out and i kind of transitioned and i sold them to another dj so I, I they were great. yeah i'm right the there trusting, the trusting market is i mean there's so many companies out there providing trusting you've got global you've got this piece of trusting here that looks like global but it's about half to three times the cheaperness like i know global trusting i got quoted for there's a audio company in mattoon illinois um, that quoted me fourteen hundred dollars for a six and a half foot piece of trust a top plate and a bottom plate doesn't that seem a little high fourteen hundred dollars yeah, this is a, a little high. company's trust back here called cedars link i can get a six and a half foot piece a top and a bottom uh for five fifty six hundred bucks there's also Galaxy Stage Trussing. They do the same exact thing. They're like Cedars Link. We have a lot of those people that sell Galaxy out here, which it's, the thing with me is like, I've, I only have Global Trust just because that's what I bought way back when, but that was when it was really affordable. I mean, a six and a half foot stick was 200 bucks and a 10 foot stick was 350. And now it's like 500 for a 10 foot stick and 400 and the base plates are absurd. And I, I make sure to, you know, I'm, let's say this in a, I mean, what's recorded, whatever. Uh, I'll climb the truss if I need to adjust something uh, just because I, I feel secure enough doing it. But that's because we have a 36 by 36 base plate on the bottom of each. So it's not going, and they're steel. So they're not going anywhere. You're, you're not you're not the only one that climbs truss. I watched a video just recently of Rick Webb setting up for a prom and uh, he climbed the truss and their truss was so big, they had to suspend uh, safety cables from the rafters so it wouldn't tip over. They did, that was a, one of their biggest setups. I was like, man, that's a lot of cabling. Oh, see, yeah. That was before he did all his wireless DMX, like with the donor stuff. He was all like into this light and out of that light. And I was like, holy cow, that's a mess. <laughs> well, those, those, those kind of deals like that, they're, they're, when you start doing that kind of things, you're bringing in, you know, a, a 20 foot delivery truck with a, a, you know, a hydraulic lift, you're bringing in man lifts, you're bringing in stuff in there, but you're also charging not, you know, a couple thousand dollars. You're talking, you know, 12, 15, 20, $30,000. There's a company here in Chicago that does a lot of big schools and they're $40,000 plus to come in and transfer a, uh, basically a gymnasium into uh, you know, a club and they, 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 they fly trussing, they do all everything. They, they fly speakers. They bring a famous, you know, DJ in to DJ and they're not cheap. And the thing is that, you know, when you have people like that, when you have that kind of equipment that you can actually rely on and actually, you know, walk up or carry up, it's, you know, these guys just like you right there, Matt doing it, it it's a lot of work. But the thing is that, again, it all boils down to also what you're charging too. If you have a six foot piece of truss that you're you know, hanging a few lights off of and putting a moving head on top of, uh, you know, you shouldn't need to climb up. But if you got like, you know, a, tw a 12 foot or 20 foot truss and you got, you know, bars going across and you want to make sure you do have a good base. You want to make sure you're protected. But also try to work things safely. Don't get hurt. That's the last thing you want. We don't see no one getting hurt out there. Uh, 
uh, Aaron and DJ said, okay, that's it. Onions is where I draw the line. I won't uh, DJ where there are onions. So, <laughs> no salsa you know, for I, DJ Aaron. <laughs> I would say that's, if she got onions for her wedding, that's just the smell of the dance to, floor. She probably didn't have to fake crying. No. Uh, <laughs> Rachel, how about you? Are you are you seeing uh, brides reuse things for other uses, or are they, you know, using things one and done, like centerpieces or something like that? So a popular bouquet option up here is wooden flower bouquets. Um, th those I've seen, you know, quite regularly. Uh, a lot of our weddings out here are turning more to like a, a lounge style. They're getting away from like the really formal stuffy venues. And uh, they're moving a lot also towards like this rustic barn kind of vintage look. And I have a couple venues around here where they have what they call like a Pinterest room where brides can leave like their centerpieces and like their bottles and knickknacks and all their decor stuff you know their their seating charts and the the easels and whatever they use and they kind of like um like re-gift them and recycle them so another bride can go into this pinterest room and be like oh i like that glassware i like those vases i like you know this uh seating chart mirror thing and like that uh, there's a lot of um like hand-me-down stuff going on which i think is kind of neat so but i haven't seen like onions or you know like a string bean you know bouquet but i have seen wooden flowers so no, you, that's you, you never seen like a, a bridesmaid or a bride chewing on her you know her uh base of her <laughs> bouquet no no <laughs> uh, braylon how about how about down there in texas i did have uh a brisket uh, bouquet yet or uh, anything oh, like that or dear <laughs> lord listen i'm telling y'all right now i'm from texas don't get me wrong but if a bride walked down with a brisket bouquet i'd probably <laughs> i don't be know in what love. i do oh, I, no <laughs> mike would take it and grill that thing up like, i wouldn't oh, know what to do. i wouldn't know what to do i i well, would i grew up in san antonio it. so I, was like, I, I would lose. Where's the barbecue sauce? Is at? Where's the barbecue sauce? I need, I need to dip some barbecue sauce in that, you know? Oh, <laughs> uh, I would lose it, man. Let me tell you. Um, no, so I mean, I've seen so, uh, so it's, it's funny that we talk about. I, I, so I, I usually don't have like little preferences that I like and do not like, but a lot of brides, especially down here, um, they use like that stuff that's called like pompous grass. Um, Mm -hmm. I okay I this is hot take I hate that stuff so much I really don't think it's pretty at all but hey if my brides have it I I love it I let them do it I'm like right, cool let's do it and I'm like yeah they're great it's great um keep your sparklers so, away from those yeah they are so dead and so dry that they will just bam. I've lived cocktail foxtails before yeah basically the, the same thing with sparklers how would sparklers set those off it's a very sparklers dry it's a very dry like kind of like floral kind of grass it's, so it's, it's like sparkling. kindling uh, wood it's very yeah. it, 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 you breathe out the wrong way it'll catch fire yeah when they rub it live they spark and so there's a tiny bit of heat that gets emitted so i've i've lit off uh foxtails and i lit off um uh tissue paper there were truffle trees like yeah. Dr. and so now the the the, the flowers <clears> were my i i put the sparklers far enough out of the sweetheart's table and then at some point during dancing <laughs> coordinator or somebody moved them back and so it was like right underneath but it was perfect because like I threw her on girl on fire Alicia Keys and I mean the bride like put it on TikTok it blew up and it was like it was <laughs> so, uh, so Matt are, because and that's not bad I know you do a lot outdoor events out there in California a lot outdoor weddings versus Rachel I think you're kind of like us in the Midwest here we, we're a little more indoor we do some outdoor stuff like you know ceremonies I mean, like cocktail hour, but most of the receptions are usually inside because either we want air conditioning because we don't like it too hot. And we want, you know, in the winter time, like right now, I have I have like eight inches of snow outside and it's uh, what, uh, what's the temperature right now in Chicago? Uh, five degrees above zero. So <laughs> having a wedding outside would not be as nice as in Southern California. But 70 and beautiful today. 70 degrees today. Beautiful. They, they, rub it in, man. Rub it in. Or down in Texas, which is nice. Oh, uh, no. We're actually on a freeze right now. I haven't been at work for the past two to three days because we are completely ice, ice over. Down there. Yeah, we're ice yeah, over. I, well, I know, but it's, 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 I'm talking about a little bit warmer. I'm not talking about it's like 80 degrees. You're what, oh, right, 30s? Right. Um, 30s, I mean, 
Yeah, we're down like 22 right now. 20, like 18, uh, 22. It's, so war it's warmer than nine. <laughs> I'm about to say, that's nothing than nothing for you. Nothing or five. For you, we'll say right. five. Are you guys supposed to get like three quarters of an inch or a half inch of ice or something like that? About that, but it should be over by Thursday. That's power crippling and tree knocking down type ice. Yeah. <laughs> we so, haven't had that here since 2012. So, Matt, when you run into sparklers, you again, <clears throat> using outside, do you do anything to protect? Do you have like a fire extinguisher or anything just in case something gets out of hand? You can, you can. Uh, I've got a friend who's got a metal fire extinguisher. Um, no, I mean, I, whenever I set them up anywhere, I make sure that there's no draping above. I make sure it's not close enough to where people would be. Um, when I set them on the dance floor, I, I discovered something great. So I have these little uplighting shields. They're little metal half, half circle shields. Um, and they're pretty heavy. They weigh like a couple pounds. Every time I've put my sparklers on the floor, people kick them, they run into them, dance floors get overflowed, whatever. At this wedding I did, I put the, the shields around them. The sparklers stayed in the same place the whole night. They didn't get touched or anything. Uh, so what, what kind of shield are you talking about? They're custom made. I found a guy on eBay that makes them. I, I don't, he makes limited runs. Um, I'll have to send you the info because whenever I post them, people always ask where I get them. And every time I hit up the guy, he's like, no, there's no supply of them or whatever. But um, I got them. They're only like 15 bucks a piece, but they're, they're great. And I had the idea to use them for my up lights. And then what do they do like cover just the, around the machine itself, or do they come up higher past the machine? They're about, they're about 16 inches high, about a 16 to 18 inches high, I think. And then they cover, yeah, basically the, the front of the machine. So you don't see any part of the machine. You just see a nice white shield and then sparks coming out. But I will I... say people that do low lying fog and then have the cold sparks where you, I mean, the fog's so thick, you can't, that looks cool. That's, yeah, that's especially cool. for a bride and groom's first dance. That looks great for pictures. If we're yeah. outside, yeah, I don't, I don't, I just let them, <clears throat> we're not underneath something that's can catch on fire. Um, I've had venues here that like, don't allow sparklers but then i bring them anyway and show them like hey look you can put your hand over it it's perfectly fine and and the venue is like well i guess then i don't see why we can't use them so um i always try to push for my clients if they if they really want them um i try to always clear with the venue ahead of time but you know some some venues are very like can't have sparklers even if they're cold sparks or or anything so i but i'm always safe them, yeah, you always, you always how, many people, how many people on here use cold sparks? Do you use cold sparks, Rachel? No way. No way. Um, the, there is so much red tape out here. You need permits. You need a fire marshal on site. Um, it's, it's ridiculous. It's not even worth it. So if, if a client wants it, I'll let it be someone else's problem. You know, I got a guy, I'll subcontract it out. I don't want the mess. I don't want the cleanup. I don't want the risk. I don't want to pay for insurance. I want to have nothing to do with them personally. That's just me. Um, now, I will yeah. I will say, I just I just kind of started getting into the cold sparks. I actually, Rachel, I don't know if you've ever seen any of my other videos, but I have a product review channel. That's what this, I'm in my studio right now. Um, and I have several DJ companies that send me stuff. There's a company out of China. They have two different warehouses in the United States. Um, they're called Sheds. The way they spell it, you think it would be S-H-E-D, uh, but it's S-H-E-D-H-D-S. -H -H I don't know if you've ever heard of them, uh, but they sent me a cold spark machine. And I've noticed between different um, cold sparks, like it seems like each machine puts out a different type of geyser i guess you would call it They're, every machine's not different it, one may be a lot more um more spark look like more of a fountain some of them may be a more of a straight skinny stream i don't know what it is but i know they're expensive um when they first came out they were like 300 bucks now they're approaching five and six hundred dollars a piece mm -hmm. um but the good thing is matt messaged me i think it was today and said he's got a guy that can get spark powder because i was paying 30 like 30 dollars a bag and it's like that's ridiculous eight, eight or nine bucks a bag is what i pay and my sparklers they're the plastic so you got the the you got the different model yours shoot more out than up mine i i like my specific model it's a plastic housing um but i've never seen anybody that has sparklers that shoot as like high as mine goes because i i literally you'll see in some of my videos they shoot like 20 feet high um because i want like I want more of a firework look than like just on the ground shooting up type of look. But I've had, when I had the metal ones, which are the model that you have, um, different kind of machine, it shoots 
not as high, but it shoots more of like a fountain um, is what I've noticed. But yeah, it's also the, the one that I have. Um, it's got a bunch of different settings. If you get multiples, you could program like shows where like boom, boom, like a, like a, like the wave kind of deal. It'll shoot them off like that. Um, it also has speed. So it seems like it's got three different speeds. So you've got low, it'll only shoot so high. Medium shoots, you know, 10 feet or so. And then I, where I shot that video that you were watching, I was in our, uh, one of our lawn care shops and the ceilings in there are 18 feet high, I think between 15 and 18 feet high and they were hitting the ceiling at full like it just seems like it spins faster and throws them higher i mean i don't know if yours have different settings speed settings but that's what that one has yeah well, i i dmx mine so uh there's two channels one is the first one doesn't do anything it's function but if you keep it at zero it's full function and then the other one is for height so you can get really it's nice when you dmx them because you can get really precise with like the venue coordinator if they don't want them to hit the ceilings you can get right up to that ceiling without actually hitting it with uh versus the remote is just the three presets so really quickly aaron is say asking what the uh he did a wedding a year ago tonight that was negative 15 degrees celsius and played outside i, I remember that that uh that was that beautiful venue that the one road was one way from correctly uh aaron uh, he also asked what the average upcharge is for cold sparks. Uh, the units up there in Canada, he's seen them for $650 for a unit. Again, uh, Canada dollar <laughs> versus US dollar is different. So they, they have you, also different fees. You can buy the yeah. ones I've seen on eBay today uh, <laughs> from a company called Yuking. Uh, they're a Chinese company, which Buddy has some Yuking stuff. I know Mike has some Yuking stuff. I'm pretty sure I've got some Yuking stuff. I'm not for sure, but. Uh, for a set of two, they're white units. I haven't seen any black units. They're white, uh, but I think they're less than $300 a piece and you get two of them. It's like less than $600, but from the ones from Sheds, the one that they sent me to do a video on, um, it was $330 when they sent it to me. They just got back from Chinese New Year and they were having a sale. They bumped them up to four hundred and like 50 60 dollars a piece that's almost five it's like man i don't even know if i want to buy another one because i was going to buy like three more so i'd have four of them they give me you know they give me 10 percent off but that's only like 30 dollars off a unit but, so so I, so closing us out really quickly dj because we're almost we're up almost on time here we went through the hour so fast uh first and first i gotta thank dj rachel here for coming in tonight and coming on to the round table show thank you so much and uh, DJ Brentley, uh, I know Mike uh, jumped out. Uh, are you seeing anyone reusing stuff again, or are you using it one time, one and done stuff very quickly? I'm seeing two things because I'm at uh, two venues a lot. They have your entire decor and all that you can pick from, or the rental companies that also service wedding venues. There are just people that are just running the stuff, drop and go. And the only other thing I'm seeing is the traditional disposable stuff. But more and more, I am definitely seeing a huge upswing around here from a few rental companies and the two main venues I'm really at providing everything. You walk in, you pick your callers, you pick your chargers, you do all that, sign the dotted line, and you come back and get married. That's the whole deal. And it's a real big thing around here right now. Either A, the venue's providing it, or B, they have four different providers that pick one of these, you get all your stuff from that. Yeah, the and that's the biggest factor. trend I'm seeing up here right now. The convenience factor is huge. So, again, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, you should watch this live over on Twitch. We do this Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock Central Time. It's as 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Pacific Time. And, again, I want to thank my panel, thank everyone here. And, I, again, I want to thank our special DJ. I want to have you back on here again. There's so many more questions. I'm sure I'm going to get tons of questions in here. Uh, for you being on here, DJ Rachel. Again, thank you so much. And then, uh, again, guys, critiques, comments, questions, smash the like button. Give me some likes there. Go subscribe to DJ Rachel right now. Yeah. Right subscribe now. to DJ Rachel. Go to her yeah, channel. Definitely. Subscribe to all these guys. And, again, if you're watching this, you have to subscribe to the channel here on YouTube or on my Twitch channel. Go ahead and hit that follow button. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And, oh, and, let's get yeah, and also, it also follow me on Twitch because uh, I'm starting a new channel or a new channel and just follow me on Twitch. I'll be doing a lot of DJ mixes. There you go. Cool things up there. 
So again, you guys on Twitch, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Peace.